good morning so this nptel course is on theory of fire propagation basically this is a fire dynamics course i am professor v raghavan in the department of mechanical engineering at iit madras so my email address is given here raghavan at iitm.ac.in the course contents is given here so the first module will be on basics of fires so all the fire related nomenclature important properties will be covered in this particular topic then the second topic is on review of thermochemistry that is basically how to write the reactions and how to calculate the heat temperature etc then chemical equilibrium how to find the products of combustion etc then the rate at which reaction occurs that is chemical kinetics so this will be reviewed then third topic is on review of premixed and diffusion or non premixed flames basically fire involves several types of uh, uh, combustion phenomena so this review is important to understand what are the types of phenomena we are going to read then we will exclusively see about the burning of liquid fuels so liquid fuels are used in several industries and uh, solvents are used in several industries which are flammable so when they catch fire how the behavior will be that will be dealt in this particular topic then solid fuels are everywhere for example in a room you use several types of solid fuels a chair table etc so when they burn how what are the characteristics of that that will be dealt in this fifth topic burning of solid fuels then when there is a fire involved in a enclosure or a room the fire plumes that is the smoke transport in the room out of the room etc will be analyzed in the sixth topic which is named as analysis of fire plumes so these are the fundamental things which we will uh, understand before going to the characteristics of a enclosed enclosure fires so the enclosure fires basically what are the different conditions what are the stages etc will be seen in this enclosure fires and uh, ventilation conditions for the air coming in or smoke going out etc how they affect the uh, performance or the features of the enclosure fire that will be dealt in the seventh topic then this course will also be introduced to dust ignition that for example if there is a dust layer deposited over some hot surfaces they may ignite so this dust ignition dust explosion when they when the dust actually form as a cloud with air then they may explode so the dust explosion and we will also introduce the necessary things of forest fires finally we will deal with fire safety aspects fire safety aspects include the detection of the fire then alarming a deal about the fire quenching or the suppression these are the books classical books from uh, james quintry enclosure fire dynamics fundamentals of fire phenomena then then the book by uh, drysdale introduction to fire dynamics then again we have a quintry's book principles of fire behavior then this is another uh, under agriculture book gorbert par and rockwells fire dynamics and uh, there's a book by ali rangwala and v raghavan on mechanics of fires so these are the books which we can refer for this particular course so basics of fires fire is a combustion reaction that is it involves a fuel and involves an oxidizer and uh, when oxidation reaction occurs it is rapid that is the time involved for the reaction to occur is very small and uh, it is exothermic that means heat is released during this reaction so fire is rapid exothermic oxidation of a fuel and uh, this involves several types of fuels in solid state liquid state or a gaseous state so basically there is a fuel involved solid liquid or gaseous fuel 
and an oxidizer. Usually, atmospheric air will be the oxidizer. The oxygen content in the atmospheric air will serve for the oxygen. So, fuel should be present, some oxygen should be present for this reaction to trigger. Not only this, some ignition source. When fuel and oxygen are at room temperature, say 298 Kelvin, nothing will happen. When you ignite it with a hotter uh, spots, hot spots are uh, some ignition source, then the reaction will be triggered. Okay, so we can see this triangle here. There is a fuel involved, oxygen which is involved. Then the fuel and oxygen should be first ignited, and uh, once these two react, then heat will be released, and this heat again is coupled to this fuel and oxidizer. For example, the if you take the solid and liquid fuels, for example, solid fuel has to be heated so that the gaseous fuels evolve from that. Similarly, liquid fuel should be heated so that it evaporates and vapors come out. And uh, these fuel vapors or fuel gases react with oxygen to release heat and this is the closed uh, uh, interaction between fuel, oxygen and heat. Okay, now when the fuel reacts with oxidizer or oxygen, heat is released, then some toxic combustion products are also released. When I say toxic, basically you can have CO, carbon monoxide, nitric oxides, sulfur oxides, etc. So, combustion products basically contain CO2, CO, nitric oxides, then water vapor, then uh, sulfur oxide if sulfur is present in the fuel and so on. And uh, heat is also released. And it is also important to note here that light is also released. For example, the flames from these fires are luminous. So, light is also evolved. So, rapid thermo oxidation reaction is exothermic in nature. And uh, this, the fuel which is in solid, liquid, or gaseous state reacts with oxygen after getting into gaseous state and uh, heat is released. So, this triangle, all the three things are coupled to each other. Now, fire is generally turbulent in nature. So, turbulent in nature meaning there is several type of flow, fluid flow mechanics involved. Fluctuations in the flame height or the fire length and so on. Okay. If you see a fire from a small liquid pool, you will see that the fire actually fluctuates, oscillates over the liquid fuel and it is highly turbulent in nature. But if you reduce the size of the uh, fuel source, then you will tend to laminar flames. So, a laminar flame is different than a turbulent fire. And as I told, basically the fire involves gas phase reactions. So, even if you have solid and liquid fuels, gases are evolved from the, these fuels basically and they react with the oxygen from the air and the combustion takes place or the oxygen reaction takes place. So, it is generally gas phase reactions are involved, but in some cases like say if you take wood etc, then a yeah, carbonaceous substance is formed which is called char, char, char and a surface reaction can occur in that. So, you will have seen that when the wood burns, you will see a red hot surface. That red hotness is nothing but oxygen comes to the surface of the carbon and it reacts. So, surface reaction can also occur, but that is not basically a fire. That is only, it is called smoldering. Okay, you will be seeing it later. So, phenomenally, the heat release, major heat release occurs due to the gas phase reactions. And the third point is the fire occurs in a non premix mode. Okay. See, for example, if you take a Bunsen burner in the lab, okay, you have you supply fuel and the air also entrains from the atmosphere, it mixes in a mixing tube, and finally a mixture of fuel and oxygen comes out or, or air comes out and it burns. So, this is a premixed flame that is before the combustion zone the fuel and fuel vapor or fuel gas and the oxygen in the air is mixed. 
but fire the mixing mixing of the fuel and the oxygen takes place only in the reaction zone so they are called it is actually called non premix mode of combustion okay so fire is usually non premix because if you take say for example yeah liquid fuel and if you burn uh, ignite it what happens is the liquid first evaporates the vapors come out of the surface and goes to the flame zone oxygen in the air comes to the flame zone so these two will meet at pro proper proportions called stoichiometric proportions and then the reaction will complete in the flame zone so this type of combustion is called non premix combustion again in the third um, chapter we will see this so this combustion reaction is turbulent and non premix in nature for, for fire then for solid and liquid fuels the heat which is released has to be fed back to the solid and liquid surfaces in order to continuously evolve the gaseous fuels for example solid fuel has to be heated so that the trapped gases in the solid will be released and these are called volatiles this volatiles will be released and this fuel volatiles will participate in the uh, chemical reaction in the gas phase similarly for a liquid fuel when heat feedback occurs to the liquid surface then evaporation occurs and uh, the fuel, the liquid fuel vapors will liquid fuel will evaporate and the vapors will come out from the surface and react with the atmospheric oxygen okay now the reactants fuel and air they mix at proper proportions and constitute to the fire like for example the flame zone reactants enter from opposite directions and meet at stoichiometric proportions so that the flame is intact the fire is intact and uh, this heat release due to this reaction the oxygen entrainment from the ambient and the fuel availability see for example if the fuel is depleting the fuel is not present then the fuel fire will cease so these three heat fuel and oxygen are coupled and if one of these entities for example if fuel is not there it depletes completely then the fire will break down somehow if you want oxygen entering the reaction zone then also fire will not cease exist similarly if the some way you prevent the heat feedback to the solid or liquid fuels then there will be no further gasification of the solid that is no gases will come out of the solid or evaporation of the liquid in this condition again you will see that the fire will cease to exist so the fire this is called fire triangle uh, for any combustion these three are important to be coupled if one of them fails then the fire will extinguish now if you take a fire as i told you fire is predominantly gaseous reactions when the reaction occurs heat is released that means the products will be at a higher temperature very high temperature approximately equal to 1500 kelvin to 1800 kelvin some uh, based upon the heat loss now there is a particular zone where the temperature is very high surrounding that atmosphere you will have a low temperature so in this phenomena we will see that the temperature variance variations or temperature gradients occur across the fire okay so when temperature variations are present density is inversely proportional to the temperature so if you take the equation of state i can write p equal to density into r specific gas constant into t in kelvin so you will see that normally in the fire scenario open fire scenario pressure is almost the constant so there will be some small variations only this is specific gas constant of the mixture of the uh, products or the fire uh, constituent so r is also almost constant so you will see that when temperature is higher density will be low so when temperature gradients are created across the fire so for example the let us take a fire source and the fire occurs over this source so here the fuel comes here like this oxygen from the ambient comes here o2 
and this is the fire zone it this is burning like this so this is the source source of fire so you will see that when you have a high temperature zone here where reaction occurs in this zone and temperatures are lower here so if you see when you try to plot temperature it basically will be higher here in this point particular point will be higher and goes to a low value like this so there is a temperature gradient t versus radius as i say temperature gradient which will cause a density gradient to occur so density will be low when temperature is high density will be high when temperature is low so inversely proportional so this creates a buoyancy force light or low density gas will rise up high density gas will come and there will be a recirculation zone which is caused so this is, this is actually going to cause an entrainment and uh, this buoyancy force causes what is called natural convection so natural convection basically is occurred due to the density variations so based upon the size on the height of the fire you will see that it will be turbulent in nature the natural convection will be turbulent in nature okay now fire formed over solid and liquid fuels so solid and liquids are condensed phase for example the density is very very high for liquid it may be 900 kg per meter square meter cube and uh, for the solids it may be again 1500 etc for example coal density will be say 1500 kg per meter cube and so on so solid and liquid fuels are called condensed phases and uh, when you involve such fuels the combustion phenomena is heterogeneous heterogeneous in the sense first of all there is a one more phase for example gas phase all the reactions are going to occur air is in gas phase the gases coming out of solid and liquid fuels are in gas phase but there is a condensed phase either a solid phase or liquid phase are involved so this is heterogeneous phenomena here what is happening is now when you take the solid fuels the solid fuels many fuels will leave what is called a char so charring solid fuels means a char is when you eat this solid fuel a char is formed char is nothing but carbon plus ash that is called char so when you take a solid fuel when you heat it the gas first there will be some moisture which will go out then there will be some trapped gases called volatiles which will also go out finally a solid remains this solid basically is a fixed carbon and some minerals which is called ash so when you take the charred fuels and uh, when you heat it to say 800 to 900 kelvin temperature then what happens is in the carbon surface in the carbon surface carbon surface oxygen from the ambient will come and a surface reaction will take place so this surface reaction will be not there is no say visible flame or anything if you light up a candle you will see a flame okay and that is in say bright orange color but if you take the surface reaction you will not see any flame you will see the surface to be red hot you know like a cigarette uh, when you smoke a cigarette what happens you will see a red hot surface which is actually uh, depleting down so consuming the tobacco inside the cigarette so similar to this the surface reactions take place in the charring fuels so this is another important thing we should understand so if there are wood say table made of wood and uh, any material which is made of wood etc or even uh, in the the floor it may be made of wood etc then what happens is upon ignition if it is a char forming see for example vinyl flooring will not have any char it is a plastic type of flooring but if you have a charring fu uh, fuel like wood then a char a carbon plus ash is formed and that will also lead to surface reactions so that's what i'm trying to explain here a wood is a charring fuel because when you heat the wood uh, wood surface for example moisture is released then volatiles which are the gases trapped inside the wood will leave then finally yeah 
carbon and ash will be formed. So now, if further heating of this chart takes place and its temperature reaches to 800 to 900 Kelvin, then the oxygen will be able to react coming to the surface of the solid. Okay. Now, the condition where you see a fire, that is a flame which is coming out, that is basically a visible fire, it is called visible fire. So, a smoke also will come out basically. So, smoke also can be seen and some flames also can be seen. So, flames basically will be uh, some uh, bright red, bright orange color, you can see that. And uh, if you only have say char and the oxygen comes to the surface and burns as a surface reaction, then you will see the red hot, so glowing with bright red color. So, the red hot surface will be seen basically and this process of surface reaction is also called smoldering process. Smoldering process where the oxygen comes to a solid surface and burns like reacts with the carbon in that basically. So, these are all various processes which actually occur in a fire scenario. Now, natural fires. So, before going that the smoldering can occur once you have a see for example, if it is an enclosure catches fire, the, there is some particular commodity or a component in the enclosure which will first example uh, ignite at. So, for example, there may be a dustbin in which some papers are put that may first catch fire and that fire will subsequently ignite another commodity. So, which is next to it. So, maybe it is a chair or anything something like that. So, once this flaming combustion where you see a visible fire that completes then hot charred surfaces can get the oxygen and smoldering can occur or if a smoldering first occurs somewhere for example, uh, there is a char surface which is actually first is burning and we unnoticedly leave it that leave that to the room and then this actually can ignite the as a commodity. So, smoldering can occur either before or after the fire ok and uh, in both these cases hot products are released. In the case of smoldering for example, carbon reacts with oxygen it may also form CO. CO is a fuel basically and uh, further when the smoldering occurs the, the beneath of this can be a raw wood. So, volatiles can also be released ok. So, for example, if we take a solid surface like this and uh, this is hot enough the uh, top portion of the solid is hot enough say 900 Kelvin and uh, so this is say char oxygen from the ambient comes and reacts with this. So, this is wood ok and this is char. Now, you see that this reaction taking place in this char part can heat up the wood beneath this and volatiles can be released. So, gases, gas fuels can be released from the uh, surface. So, hot products can come out that is C reacts with O2 give CO2 or C plus O giving CO etcetera can occur. So, basically I would say 2 C plus O2 giving 2 CO. So, now this reactions can occur. So, gas fuels and products come out, come out of the uh, smoldering surface. Now, fire is caused by natural means, lightning, may, many forest fires are occurring only due to lightning. Then volcano eruption can also cause fires, ok. Volcano erupts and it goes to the wild land and uh, that can trigger a fire. Earthquakes can trigger a fire, ok. Now, these are all natural causes, nobody can make this ok. So, very very uh, natural calamity basically it, uh, which causes fire huge fires and uh, the self heating of coal in coal mines basically if you say coal mines and uh, underground the coal mines are there, their self heating of coal occurs. When the coal reaches a particular temperature then it auto ignites. So, that will cause underground coal mine fires ok. Now, the naturally caused fires are very very large fires, the scale of these fires are quite large. 
some examples are given here. The Ruth Bullen's underground coal fire in the USA, you can see that it has been burning for more than 40 years, 4 decades. Lot of underground smoldering and the continuous uh, fire is, so products are again evolved. So, the area involved is several square miles. Okay, now based upon the condition, see for example, if you have a fire, based upon the fire actually sustains with the entrainment of oxygen from the air. So, the air entrains the fire due to the natural conversion, we have seen that buoyancy force induces some air entrainment to the fire. And if that is a situation where a yeah, fire world is formed, fire world is formed, that is nothing but, see normally when you have a fire, let us take a fire source like this and the fire burns like this. So, you will see that the air entrains in the radial direction like this, radially from throughout the circumference, radially the air entrains and the fire is maintained like this. So, oxygen entrains and fuel comes from, from here, fuel and oxygen entrains from this O2. So, now you see that in this scenario, the fire will be shorter because they all they radially they have oxygen entrains. Somehow, if there is a circumferential entrainment or a component for oxygen entrainment, then a fire world is formed. The fire world is basically due to circumferential entrainment of oxygen. So, this basically in increases the intensity of the fire. Okay. So, the rate at which oxygen comes to the surface or the surface of the flame will be quite high. So, the burning intensity also increases. So, fire whirl again can naturally occur. High intensity burning and high speed burning, high rapid rate burning will occur. So, this is also seen in uh, practice. For example, in Canto fire will about 38,000 people died in just 15 minutes because of the huge intensity of the fire whirl. Okay? The rate at which the things burn will be very, very high. So, natural fires are very large in scale and they actually cause lot of damages. So, this is a simple demonstration of the fire world in the lab. So, this is actually done in what is called WPI, Worcester Polytechnic Institute in USA. So, you will see that if you have a liquid pool, say kerosene pool, okay, in a beaker and if you ignite it, then a fire is formed like this. As I told you, a well behaved fire forms to a certain height. So, this is the flame height. Say, I will say H F flame height. So, this the kerosene vapors come from this fuel side and the oxygen comes from the ambient and the a flame is formed like this. So, this H F is very small because of the entrainment like this. Now, if you allow the gas to end, the, for example, this is the pool from the top view. And if I have a okay, opening like this, okay, so from the top I am seeing here, if I have enclosure like this, this is, these are enclosures, when I hatch this is enclosure basically and this is the pool surface, this is the pool surface. Now, the air actually enters like this, enters like this, forming a circumferential component. When you do this, the flame is very, very tall. You can see the flame here, very, very tall flame is got. So, HF for a, this is called fire whirl. So, the flame height of the fire whirl is much, much larger than the normal flame, which is occurring over a pool surface without any circumferential component, component. This is the circumferential component is induced. So, that will induce the fire world. 
Do you understand? So, fire wall will increase the burning rate of the fuel plus the flame length will be very high. So, that is the, uh, so that is the intensity of the fire is increased so much that it rapidly spreads over the other commodities.